Thanks for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. In this segment, the People's Democratic Party on Thursday suspended former Governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshi, former President of the Senate, Pius Anyim, Professor Denise Atiava on Aslam, Aslam Aliyu. Yes, that's the name. The suspension, which takes effect on Thursday, that was yesterday, was arrived at after an extensive review of the affairs of the party pursuant to the provisions of PDP constitution as amended in 2017. The PDP also referred the governor of Benway State, Samuel Otom, to the National Disciplinary Committee over his reported involvement in anti-party activities. This was disclosed in a statement signed by the National Publicity Secretary, Debo Ologwangba. A former governor of Akiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, had earlier blamed stakeholders and politicians for a majority of the problems facing the country currently. Fayoshe disclosed that there was a lot wrong with Nigeria, adding that nothing had changed in the country since 1979. We also remember that Samuel Otom was part of the G5, the G5 that were not in terms, as, so to speak, with uh, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and especially the chairman of the party, Yocha Ayu, who they asked to step down because of the zoning or internal arrangements in the PDP about zoning the major positions in the party. Well, joining us to discuss this is Taiwo Olakpade, a, a political analyst and public affairs commentator. I'm just adding that now. Thank you very much, Olakwade, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, your credentials are very long, so I was just stumbling on what to say. But, but right now, we've just had that news that um, the governor of Osho State went to the appeal court after he was sacked by the tribunal elections tribunal he went to the appeal court and he has had victory let's begin from there what are your thoughts of what has happened right now well the uh the ruling today of the court of appeal uh the election petitioner tribunal regarding the petition filed by former governor of Washington uh, State, uh, you know, against the elected governor of the state, uh, that's the Senator uh, Adeleke. Uh, well, some people saw it coming because if you remember, uh, Governor Ademola Adeleke uh, is not new to this environment. Uh, he was at the point at the Senate for four years, and uh, he also contested against uh, uh, Governor Buiga Oyetola, uh, you know, in 2019. But uh, the 2019 election, uh, eventually it was uh, uh, Oyetola that was declared winner. And even at that election, uh, Ademola Adeliki uh, was uh, emphatic about the fact that uh, his victory uh, was stolen from him at that uh, 2019 election. And they had another opportunity for two of them to meet again as a leading contestant in that election that took place, I think, around July 19 or 20, thereabouts, uh, 2022. And the result came out. Uh, it was not in favor of uh, Governor Oyetola. And, uh, you know, under the law, you have the right to go to the Court of Appeal, election petition tribunal, in which uh, the governor then uh, decided to uh, to appeal the the, 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 the the ruling. And, um, you know, today it was a judgment given by uh, uh, the tribunal in which the election of uh, uh, was affirmed, was reaffirmed, uh, by the election person tribunal, but I believe this uh, is not going to be the last uh, to be heard of this case. Uh, oh, Isola still has the opportunity, you know, to go further uh, to the Supreme Court if he so wish 
to also contest uh, the judgments that we had today. And if you recall again, the case was that of uh, uh, overvoting. One of the prayers by governor, former governor of Oshu State, Oichola, was that uh, uh, there was too much of overvoting in so many polling units during that governorship election in Oshu State. And was praying to the before the tribunal that uh, those areas should be cancelled and then he should be declared uh, the validly elected governor of the state and that uh, the certificate of return uh, given to uh, Senator Deleke should be taken back from him and given to him. And you know, the case of Bibas, uh, one good thing about this 2023 general election uh, is the fact that in any polling unit where we have the number of voters are higher than the number of accredited voters. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, let's say, for instance, we have a hundred number of people as registered voters in the world, and eventually we had uh, like 101 or even 102 uh, people who have voted in that same unit. What the law says is that that election uh, is going to be nullified, it's going to be cancelled. So, Governor Itola, on that premise, approached the courts, you know, saying that, uh, that there were instances of uh, overvoting in, uh, I can't remember vividly how many polling units, but it was so large. And for that reason, uh, by, all, by his own uh, calculation, it deducted the number of uh, areas he believed that were overvoting. And uh, he believed that uh, he won that election. But today, uh, we have seen a judgment from the courts. Uh, uh, the next phase for Governor Oyetola to do is to further ventilate his opinion, his belief uh, at the Supreme Court. And uh, that will be the final uh, court of arbiter in any case in the country. So we are expecting that. Uh, if governor, former governor Yotola is not convinced uh, by today's judgment, he still has the right to take his, his case uh, to the apex court in the land, which is the Supreme Court. Of the Are Federal you not government. worried? Um, the election, the election was were held in uh, June, you said, and this is March. This is when we're having. Yes, 2022. Yes, this is when we are having. Uh, this judgment from the appeal court and all that. This is the same thing that led to uh, this kind of staggered elections in the first place. We have in Anambra, we have in Imo, we have in Oshun, we have in Ekiti and all those places. So, in the Baesa, Udo, yeah, but, yes. So, the time between an election and when the matters concerning election are rounded off. Do they give, does it give you any worry that it is too long or do you think it's just good enough? Well, uh, the way our electoral process is being conducted, particularly uh, the way our politicians also react when it comes to the outcome of election. You, you see cases of some people uh, that they know within themselves that uh, they cannot win election. But so long that they have emerged candidates of their political parties, and when election is conducted and results declared, you see them saying that, no, I won the election. I was robbed. I was rigged out. Uh, just like we used to say when we were in uh, secondary school or, or even at the university level, you will say, oh, I, I, okay, I remember vividly during JAM, you will say, JAM gave me so so score. Whereas it was the outcome of your performance that uh, uh, that JAM marked and gave you your score. But you will never accept, you will never admit that uh, your performance was exactly the outcome of the result that uh, you got at that examination. Students used to say, oh, they gave me, they awarded so so much, uh, they marked to me, or they gave me so much mark. You know, uh, shying away from the truth that uh, underperformance at that examination is the reason why you scored so low, 
or you failed in that uh, particular paper. So what I'm what I'm trying to say is that uh, you see some of our politicians, and uh, it's quite unfortunate that uh, some people cannot accept defeat in good faith. It's a contest, and in every contest, there must be a winner. I don't like to say that we all also be a loser. Uh, I like to use the word there must be a winner uh, and there must be a runner up. It has in the second position, third position, and fourth position as the case may be. So, reason why we have had staggered election, this 2022 general elections, we had governorship election contested uh, or conducted rather in 28 states. Why eight states we have had? A staggered election in those states, like we rightly mentioned, Kogi, Edo, Bayesa, uh, Oshun, Ondo, Ekiti, Imo. So uh, it will be very difficult for us to have a kind of election where we have governorship election conducted in 36 states of the Federation because of the nature of our politicians not uh, being factor enough uh, to accept defeat uh, in good faith. And that's the reason why. Uh, we, 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 are, we are having this kind of scenario. But the beauty of democracy uh, is that uh, when, you, when you have such a contest and you believe that uh, you have been cheated, that doesn't mean that we have some cases that are genuine cases uh, in this election that uh, you, you too, you believe that, oh, maybe so also candidate of so also political party. Okay, we've been talking with Taiwo Lakwade on uh, the politics. And uh, we'll just take a very short break. And when we return, we'll wrap up with what is happening in PDP. Stay with us. Hello. Welcome back. Um, we've been talking with Taiwo Olakwadi, a public affairs analyst. And we're looking at the elections, especially what is happening in PDP. So, uh, uh, Taiwo, we we're talking about the electoral process and litigations and how long it takes. But right now, uh, so that we don't lose sight of what we actually want to talk about, uh, this um, drama that is happening in the PDP, some have said that this is the beginning of the end of that party. Do you also think that? I'm talking about the suspension of very, very big names in the party that include a former governor of Ekiti State, uh, who is uh, Ayodele Fayoshi, also uh, former uh, Senate President Anyem Pius Anyem. And then they are calling on the governor of Benue State, a sitting governor of Benue State, uh, Samuel Otom, to face disciplinary committee over what they call anti-party activities. What does that tell you of the PDP? Are you also of the school of thought that PDP is dying? Uh, well, for me, uh, I think uh, uh, the decision taken by the party that are rules guiding the conduct of uh, political parties in the country, just like every other uh, institution or establishment. And, and um, this. Well, we lost Taiwo's uh, audio again, and uh, even his visuals, uh, but um, this is plus politics, and we were concerned about what is happening in the PDP. We know, we know what happened before the election, what problems they had, and they kept telling us that they were solving the problems. And a lot of people have attributed their showing in this last election to those uh, problems that emanated, that made uh, some governors to form what they called the G5 and all that. And right now it is still happening and they're saying suspension. On the one hand, some people are saying they have no right to suspend whoever they have suspended and the other ones are saying they have to follow the rules. And following the rules was the same thing that brought them to where uh, they were before the elections and all that. But we're yet to see what the future holds for a party as big as PDP. Anyway, that's how we're going to wrap up today. But before we go, we'll leave you with the highlights of the week. Today is Friday. Happy weekend. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We need to 
ensure that we go back to where we have power to this election. We go back to where we have. My best friends are evil people. My mentors are houses. My people I worship with every time. They are houses and they are Muslims, they are Yorubas. So what, what do I care where you come from? What matters to me is that you are my brother and the brotherhood has been forged since the year 1900 when Nigeria came into existence and people have paid the price for this independence. They have paid the price. So if we have some desperate politicians, we have some insane human beings who simply believe that what they now need to do is to be controlling the system and draw and destroy what we have. We need to be careful. We need to be very, very careful because we cannot allow a civil war to start. We cannot also allow a capital flight from this Lagos. Lagos is cosmopolitan. We don't want to go into this no man's land, no man's house. It belongs to us as indigenous of the state. But the prosperity that Lagos has is because other people have come from other states to invest in the state. They have come, and there are foreigners that are here. We have Lebanese people that are in Nigeria that generations of them have not been home. They have found northern Nigeria to be their home. I have friends. My best friends are Lebanese. Now, I sit back now. I start doing some spiritual, um, what do you call the distillation? When I want to talk to you, I want to find out you're about your evil. When I want to speak to you, I want to, no, we shouldn't do that to our country. Because some people have shed their blood for our independence. So it should not be about election for the Social Democratic Party. For me, when I went into this election, it was not winning at all costs. And if you listen to me, everywhere I spoke, I continuously emphasized this. It's not winning at all costs. I was going to contest the election to defend the integrity of my race. And I think I've succeeded. I came here, I went everywhere saying things that I can feel, that I change it. I said the San Gross market was not developed, was abandoned. Me, I passed there two weeks ago, they have started building the market. So somebody's listening to me. I've been speaking about this, the railway line thing, and I've heard that it's going to be done before May 29th. Somebody's listening to me. I spoke at about our yeah, yeah, government is listening to me. So for me, it's victory. It's victory. Because to remove an increment will not be the easiest person for me to do. So what I wanted to do was to test waters. And I succeeded in doing so. And remember, remember, even in our party, there were moles there. We had to contain with different misinformation by the APC. There was a day they came, they said, Kule Utman has stepped down for Babajide Sawolu. It was everywhere. And nobody has shown me proof of where I sat down with anybody to step down. There was also this man, when the election was over, he says he's the acting chairman of the SDP. Huh? And every paper carried this man, seeing that the SDP is congratulating Babajide Sawolu. Now, what they succeeded to do, even our House of Assembly members, they planted moles there. There's no transparency. There's no accountability. The, pe the people did not see it as fear and fear. It was, it was, it was, it was characterized by violence, thuggery, intimidation. You can see what happened in Lagos State. Clearly, some people are even came up openly to tell some people don't come and vote if you are not voting for a particular candidate. Is that, is that, is that a democracy? Democracy is by choice. You have the right to come and vote. I, I, I'm one of those who believe that with or that, without in the, that intimidation in, the, in the Lagos State, Governor Saolu will still win that election. He will still win that election because the 25th election is different from this election. That 25th election, it was able, it was obvious, obvious influence, not the candidates in Lagos State, no, not the people in Lagos State. You know, that will be, and if he was not in this election, and all have, have won. But because of the fear, some people resorted into intimidation, attack, and violence. Which is, which is what we see in the report that we got in so many other, other, other so many states. At the same, violence, threats, intimidation, and that's what we see. So I, as far as I'm concerned, this, uh, this, this particular election that was conducted by this INEC, I, I think I am, I am, I am, I am embarrassed. I am, I am, I am, I am disappointed. I, in fact, I am feeling, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling that we have wasted all our money. I want to advocate for a solution, because this conversation makes no meaning if we don't recommend ways for I am using this opportunity to call on every aggrieved person and every successful person that whoever won the elections, please do not blame Paula Tinibu. Do not blame Peter B for losing. Blame.
the institutions and those giving responsibilities to you. Now they're pointing in a direction to the judiciary. We were here, the certain governor built houses for judicial officers. We're here, some have been made life ventures without being in court. So this is when the marathon begins. We all must get interested in the cases. The day of court sitting, we all go to court. So that they know and they feel you. They feel our like bad body odor and everything. They'll smell it. They'll see the pressure. 